Hello everyone, welcome to topic of the day. In today's video, we are going to discuss about tomato flu. Just as India is dealing with the probable emergence of fourth wave of COVID-19, a new virus known as tomato flu or tomato fever has emerged in the state of Kerala and that is in children younger than 5 years of age. This is an article from The Hindu dated 23rd of August 2022 that talks about recent Lancet study that was published. Let us discuss about its spread in India. The tomato flu was first identified in the Kolam district of Kerala on 6th of May 2022 and as of 26th of July, more than 82 children with the infection have been reported. As of 21st of August this year, apart from Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Odisha, no other regions in India have been affected by the virus. Now let us discuss about the causes of tomato flu. It is caused by Coxsackie virus A16. Coxsackie virus A16 is one of the major pathogens associated with hand, foot and mouth disease in infants and younger children and it belongs to the enterovirus family. Now enterovirus is any of a group of RNA viruses which typically occur in the gastrointestinal tract, sometimes spreading to the central nervous system or other parts of the body. Now the hand, foot and mouth disease is a frequent febrile rash illness of childhood caused by enterovirus. Coxsackie A16, EVA71, we have Coxsackie A6, Coxsackie B and the Echovirus. Echovirus is also one of the several families of the viruses that affect the gastrointestinal tract. Let us discuss some of the symptoms and impacts associated with tomato flu. The rare viral infection is considered non-life-threatening and the primary symptoms observed in children with tomato flu are similar to those of chikungunya which include high fever, intense pain in the joints and rashes on the skin that leads to skin irritation. As with the other viral infections, further symptoms include fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, dehydration, swelling of joints, body aches and common influenza-like symptoms which are similar to those manifested in dengue. An important point is why it is called tomato flu. It gained its name on the basis of eruption of red and painful blisters throughout the body that gradually enlarged to the size of a tomato. And these blisters resemble those seen with the monkeypox virus in young individuals. If we talk about its relation with other viruses, although the tomato flu virus shows symptoms similar to those of COVID-19, it is to be noted that this virus is not related to the SARS-CoV-2. Also, tomato flu could be an after-effect of chikungunya or dengue fever in children rather than a viral infection. This virus could also be a new variant of the viral hand, foot and mouth disease, a common infectious disease targeting mostly children aged 1 to 5 years and also the immunocompromised adults. If we talk about the vulnerable groups, children younger than 5 years are at increased risk of exposure to this infection through the use of nappies, touching unclean surfaces, as well as putting things directly into the mouth. However, given the similarities to hand, foot and mouth disease, if the outbreak of tomato flu in children is not controlled and prevented, the transmission might lead to serious consequences by spreading in adults as well. If we talk about the diagnosis of tomato flu, in children with these symptoms, molecular and serological tests are done. Now when we talk about serology test, it is the antibody test to ascertain a previous viral infection and the body's immune response to it. It screens antibodies which are proteins in the blood that are produced by immune system to combat infections such as viruses. And these tests are done for the diagnosis of dengue, chikungunya, zika virus, varsila zoster virus and the herpes. And once these viral infections are ruled out, the infection of tomato virus is confirmed. Now when we talk about the treatments associated with tomato flu, it is a self-limiting illness and no specific drug exists to treat it. And because tomato flu is similar to chikungunya and dengue as well as hand, foot and mouth disease, its treatment is also similar that is isolation, rest, plenty of fluids and hot water sponge for the relief of irritation and rashes. There is also supportive therapy of paracetamol for fever and body ache and also other symptomatic treatments are required. Lastly, let us discuss about its prevention. As yet, no vaccines are available for the prevention of tomato flu and similar to other types of influenza, tomato flu is very contagious. 
Hence, it is mandatory to follow careful isolation of confirmed or suspected cases to prevent the spread of infection. Isolation should be followed for 5 to 7 days from the onset of symptoms. Now, the best solution for prevention is the maintenance of proper hygiene and sanitization of the surrounding necessities and environment. Also, it is important to prevent the infected child from sharing toys, clothes, food and other items with the non-infected children. Well, this was a little bit about tomato flu. Now, let us take up one practice question on this topic. Which of the following statements are correct regarding to the tomato flu seen in news recently? First, it is a rare contagious disease of viral nature. Second, it mostly affects children below 5 years of age. So, you have to select the correct answer using the codes given below. You can write your answers in the comments section. So, as we know, both of the statements are correct. That is, it is a rare contagious disease and it is of viral nature. Also, it mostly affects children below 5 years of age. Therefore, the correct answer is option C, that is both 1 and 2. Well, with this, we call it a wrap of today's edition of Topic of the Day. I hope you liked the video. I will see you with some other topic tomorrow. Till then, take care and do stay tuned.